Alright. Good job, Lou. I'll take that. Well, right now you're doing a great job. <laughs> you haven't missed one yet. Where'd that woman go with a cane? I was going to use that. <laughs> Oh, we have, we're missing three outfielders. We have what? We're missing three outfielders. We got ten today. Wow. Hey, man. I hear you. Landon's our sub right now because he's he said he's jet lagged.
She also does something else with, I don't know what it is, but very, she doesn't do that as much. But mostly it's just skiing and going to the park. Oh, it's, it's outside into the parking lot. That's the other thing. She does that sometimes in the parking lot. So, so it's easy and she does it. She likes it. And, you know, uh, just keeps her going. I mean, it's not like, I mean, she, she just hated teaching that much. That she wanted, that she just would rather do this. I don't know what it is, it's just like she just doesn't. I know. But like, you know, like she likes it. I think she had two years left or something, but, but she like Amy, I would say. So she started off as a kindergarten teacher at Lakota and did that for a long time and then she became a reading specialist and I guess that position was cut or something, I can't remember. And then so she went back to the classroom to teach again. And I think it was not kindergarten, it was still down there, I forget. And then, 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 and she 
she didn't like that. So she went back to being a reading specialist and has been doing that since. And that was really the, the second time she went back to become a reading specialist. That really was um, a good thing for her. Good for her. She's like, she's like, she, she's like she, this is. I think I can said. deal with that's it. That's what she said. And but what happened is at Lakota, especially, and I, I think really it's because of the district. Um, okay. uh, in Lakota, whenever there's Someone absent and they need a sub. And the first people that are called the sub are the reading specialists. And I do all you have to do is what you do. That's what she said. And she did it all, it was like every day. And with, and then the pandemic came before that and everything. And it's just like, dude, she was subbing every day. And she, that is the one thing she hates more than anything. That's what she did. She hates subbing. I, I don't know what it is. It's just, I guess she gets anxiety about it. Or it's just. Now see, some people, I'm a former teacher, and if, if well, I used to sub, and for me, whenever I would sub, dude, I would just be like, you know, I can just, I'm chill about it, and but I wouldn't do it anymore, but she just didn't like it, and she, she sent me some videos of, she was doing like some special ed stuff, but man, it was, yeah, there's no way I like it, but, so, um, I would say, really, for many years, she's probably been very mad. Uh, doing it. She was really holding on for retirement. She has a real, she had a real great salary. And, um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to do that. I made the mistake of like, I don't know. She she has thirty years, but some of them does not. Some of them outside of state don't count. Uh, I guess I don't know why that doesn't work. That isn't is that is not working. That's what she's trying to do. She's trying to get a job where she can still be in the system. And so, and she's looked for several, like like a secretary job. Um, like she applied for a job at the one kind of career center for like some kind of, you know, I mean, I know she doesn't have secretarial experience, but it's not, it's not hard to do. I said don't give up. Yeah. So, and she might be virtual, if she talks to some lady, she might be doing virtual, if she hasn't heard back yet, they haven't. So that might be another option too, which would be a little bit easier for her. Well, I'm thinking about her mom. Oh hell yeah! I, I I don't blame her by no means. I supported her and I'm totally in behind her because I mean, I hear the stories and you know she's just unhappy, man. She's on medication and stuff to try to not be be depressed and it. I mean, who isn't? But I mean, yeah, they told us. Yeah, that's what I do. So that's what she does. But uh, so yeah, it's been a long run for her. But that's really what she wants. I think if she can. She wants to do a, some kind of thing where she can stay in the system, you know, office job or something. But, yeah, she's not. She's not. She, she wants to do something. You know, she doesn't just want to do nothing. But she wants to do something. She just, this man, this man, you're unhappy. And, uh, I work with teachers all the time, and I, I've never seen a turnover like I have this year. With one of my buildings, I... I guess the one building, the elementary school on that, there were 17 teachers that either moved or resigned in one year. I do IT. <laughs> Northwest school. Yeah, I've been there for 18 years now. It's pretty, I love it. I like it because it's it's um, easy, for, like it's low stress. Uh, I it's an easy job. No stress. That's the big two things right there, so. But, oh yeah, I see it all the time. Mm -hmm. I, That's just for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, you don't even want to know. Oh, I hear my other friends. Friend. Friend. I, I, I mean, there are fights in the day here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm just learning. Yeah. Not at my building, but like the high school. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but I really think that like, so um, I think that was the big thing that the subbing constantly happens. And I think like, I think, like, I think, like, I think like, 11 and 1 didn't have the same kind of Well, the thing was that's different is, not only are you the first to be called on the sub, but you do not get paid. Other schools do at least. Yeah, I don't know about that. And Lakota is always trying to do the new shit all the time. Always trying to, like, 
man, she's like, you know, like last year, she was doing all these new curriculum things and new, you know, she's just like, my gosh, who, who cares about this stuff anymore, man? And you can't, it's just, it's like the same stuff regurgitated in a different way. And, you know, she just doesn't want to do it. But yeah, I, uh, I don't believe that. But I just wanted to, uh, she, told, she told me, like, you were funny. Yeah, I know about that, yeah. Yeah, no, I love that. You think, do you remember, Jaren? He's about ready, he's about ready to graduate. Mm -hmm. He's, yeah, he's okay. He, you know, he went to go through the pandemic, so that really sucked. It started off as normal college life, just going to the football games and really kind of sinking into it, and then it hit, and it, Basically, the last three years of his college career was spent in his bedroom or his room you know? Although, he did just get to do an internship for the Reds, and that was cool. But it happened to be that the baseball struck. No, Carter is. Carter is. He's a sophomore. Okay. And Ryan is a junior. Honors or something, yeah. yeah. And he, he, he likes it. I, I wish he would. Just, oh, yeah. He just really enjoyed being a molar with not for him. For a lot of reasons. But he enjoys it. Like every day. But he just doesn't like it. I mean, the, the thing is, with him, is he was trying to play in college, but he just doesn't want to do it now. And that's a little frustrating. Yeah. I guess. And I think he was a really good pitcher. And he had some arm problems in that. That's interesting because my brother had a head and my nephew had a head first thing and he could have molded, but Jeff wanted him to play basketball and he wanted him to play basketball and baseball. Yeah, he's a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he was a player, but he's just. I don't know what it, it was, shoulder, but and, and he doesn't. We've had it looked at by a couple doctors, and he's done some physical therapy, and it's just, he's been off, and he started to try to come back a little bit this year, and it came back again, so he's really frustrated with it, and I think that's part of it right there. He's just like, can't get over this, because he was really good. And he's a good fit, so I don't know. Maybe he will. He can continue playing, and, uh, but yeah, right now there's no plan. It is. It's tough, Rose. Man, you gotta really know it. Playing sports in college, yeah, it's brutal. This right, he doesn't even know if he wants to go to college. He yeah, does Carter. I say, I just feel like it seems really. It seems really just a lot. Young people, they just don't know what the hell they want to do. And I mean, I, I don't blame them. I understand that. Why is that? Look at Brendan. Is there just too much out there? Because I know when, at one time there was like not a lot. Like it seems like you went to high school and then you went to college, and there was there was there was there were choices that you could actually identify with. But now maybe there's just so many things out there. Like, I, don't know. I read the directions and, and the requirements they want on these um resumes, and I'm just like I don't even know what this stuff means. And deliverables and all this craziness. I'm like, what the hell is it? So I think maybe that's some of it. I, I don't know, but it's probably the fear of commitment as well. You know, I don't know. But he doesn't know what he wants to do. And I, and I kind of, like one thing I did tell him, I was like, well, I'll you right now. And I just read an article this morning about it. Like, you don't know what you want to do in college. First off, if you don't know exactly what you want to do in college, man, you're not, like, you're really taking a big game this morning. Because the return on investment is not what anyone oh, was used to do. Like these people, like what I think I saw in the last six, six years, um, college rates have dropped eight percent across the country, and the prices have gone up to fifteen percent. So that's two things that are very bad, right there. So and it's going to, you know, evictions. It's going to keep dropping. People just aren't going to go anymore because you graduate with one hundred fifty thousand dollars debt. I feel like it's just. 
it, uh, it, it definitely has, um, this has been a helpful thing, and um, she's looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, she does. I mean, I know they don't win a lot, but, but Ryan, he's never been about winning. He's more about, honestly, having fun. And I think, I think one of the things that's been really down to is it's it's seriously hardcore over there, man. Oh, oh yeah, it's 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 cutthroat as hell there. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, he was a good player, and he didn't play, play JV, but he had to share because he wasn't pitching. He had to share first base with two other people. One was a senior, and so he didn't get to play as much as he wanted. And now uh, these juniors. There's not a single one of them that's starting for the varsity um, this past year. Um, and one of them made the varsity team, but never gets to play. So it's very competitive. They're a very good team. I mean, they have, they have all the starting pitchers on that team throw over 90 miles an hour. And they have dudes on the bench that didn't even pitch one inning who are committed to college to throw over 90. And they didn't get to play. So it's just, it's a very good program. And it's, 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 we're pals, we're on the same team, but let me believe, let me tell you right now, I'll take your spot if I get a chance to do it. And he doesn't like me. Exactly, and he knows that, but I'm trying to tell him not to be like that. I know, I know. Because he's really done to turn about that. He just, he really does like that. He just likes like, he really likes playing a lot, and he likes them to die. He likes them to do the job. He's with them every single day. Yeah, he has a different kind of personality you now. Like, a lot of these uh, of athletes at Mulo is a very hungry, competitive, driven attitude, you know? I have a little athlete again. And he just, he definitely has the skills, but just he doesn't have that mentality that I think about the world. He just likes to have fun. He doesn't like coaches. He really does. He just doesn't like it. It's weird, but he'll be all right. Everybody, it all shakes out. You know, you, you find your way eventually, man. Hardly, very rarely is it, does it ever work out to be what you thought I know, and you have to let because you can't let things figure it out. Yep. That's, boy, that right there is one of the keys to parenting. Is, is you have to let your kids make their own decision and they have to live with it. That right there is a key. And it's hard because you see that, okay, man, you're making this choice. And I'm telling you right now, it's like underneath you're like, it's totally the wrong choice that you're making. Like, you are totally doing this wrong way, but they got to live with it. That's how they learn. That's how they grow. And it sucks. But Yeah. I love the summer because there's nothing. There's no one there. I don't I, I, uh, in the in the IT department there's five of us that do what I do and then there's like a couple other administrators that are like seven. We might be getting another one too. They, they need some more help. We just have all these different cool You know, I mean we have like five thousand of them I think or something. And they play them. They're just, they're, they're absolutely beautiful. They don't these are very, these are kids that have no, it's very common for a kid to pull up with the loud music and talk, coming out of the back seat, you know, and it's 8 in the morning and the kid is... Stay seated, Grandma, I'll get this ball back but, here. Uh, <laughs> I do believe you need to get a horn for that. Yeah, a little bicycle horn. The last thing they care about is their homework. <laughs> 
They let you out at night? <laughs> she sneaks out. A lot of free lunch. I don't know what you do at your school, but at our building, they still eat breakfast in the classroom. Like every single kid gets served breakfast. Everybody. In the morning, the cafeteria people show up and they have to take each car and they wheel around all the rooms and they drop off the breakfast food so everyone gets breakfast. And they eat. The teachers are supposed to hate it because it's just a ton of mess. There's all this stuff being spilled. And, yeah, can you imagine every morning? Because they don't. And at our school, everyone gets, uh, regardless of how much everyone gets free. I don't know what it is. And then in the summer, they have a program where you can come up to the school up to the building and the cafeteria staff will load food into your car for you. I think they do that uh, two weeks or maybe three weeks or something. Yeah. You gotta sign up for it, but yeah, they do that. Is it easy? How many is bigger than us? Right? Mm -hmm. it's like uh, I guess so. I mean, it's Coleraine Northwest High School, and, um, and then there's uh, Coleraine Middle School, West Middle School, and then there's, uh, and then, uh, yeah, they are they're pretty big. Yeah. And, like, they, they, all the buildings are really old. They put it up on the levee, and it just it's going to be like some kind of you know, The administrators, you know, they, they feel like they're not communicating and messing well. Like, what do you want this money for? Because you know, they well, I mean, really, that's what they want it for. The building is bad. The buildings are old. Like, there's one building, like, it stinks every day because the toilet is backed up or something. And it's like half the day the building just smells. And they have to shut the bathroom down. And it was, that was went on all year. They had engineers coming in there and people with cameras going through the pipes, and no one could, has ever been able to figure it out. And nobody knows what the hell is going on. And that's just the thing. It's old business. It's old Lebanon has good stuff. I know that Lebanon, um, you know, I know it's tough when they put in Lebanon for us, but the grand scheme is even more. The Lebanon has some good stuff. I went to Dixie Heights in Northern Kentucky. How did you guys meet? Morehead. This band. I was a music ed major. She was in color dark. I love it. After we got married, we initially moved to Illinois, Southern Illinois. That's, that's where I was moving to. She couldn't find anything. Basically, the way that worked is I found a teaching job out there. Uh, really great, small, kind of like living with a working girl. It's in Southern Illinois, um, home of like, Carbondale next to it, which is the home of Southern Illinois University. Yeah. Uh, really small kind of community, and I, I, I found a teaching job there. And, and I loved it, but Amy, man, every year she tried and tried and tried. Of course, like, like the seven years I was there, this is when it was really hard. To, I mean, being a teacher was a good thing to do, I guess. In the, the mid-90s. Yeah, it was a lot better. Yeah, so, um, and so I was involved with a lot of musical groups, drum corps in particular in the summer, which is like a summer music touring group that I was teaching. And I did that every summer, so she was often alone with the dogs. She didn't have kids back then. And one summer, this is before cell phones and texting and stuff, I called called on the payphone from somewhere just to talk to her and stuff. And man, she was just in tears. And she was just like basically telling me in tears, the house is up for sale. My dad's coming. I'm getting everything packed up and I'm moving back. If you want to stay married, I'll see you in Cincinnati. Otherwise, it's getting real. So it was an ultimatum, basically. And it's not like I had any choice in the matter. I was like, hey, man, well, no problem, dude. But that's it. I'm off. No problem. I'll see you in Cincinnati. So, yeah, so I, I was on, I talked like seven years there. And then I came back to Cincinnati. And 
just I became interested in computers, and that's and then of course she was able to really find a decent job very quickly. It's just because Murfreesboro was really small, you know, really small. Smaller than Where was that close to? What was that? Right next to Carbondale. Okay. Right next to Carbondale. Okay. They had about ten thousand. Okay. Very small, small, but it was awesome. I think I remember. Okay. But the thing about Murfreesboro that was really awesome is there, there's like seven lakes in the area, huge lakes, and everyone has boats. So I mean, every weekend, man, you want someone's boat, just listening to music, having some beers, or grilling out, or swimming, and I used to love it, man. But you just get in and out, doing all kinds of odd jobs, you know. And she's lonely because I was always gone with her music groups a lot. Sure. Now she'd probably love it. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, gone. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, so, yeah. I was like, dude, damn it, it's not a choice, you know? Yeah. 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 Which I knew, but I mean, I never knew she, she wanted it. She was like, this was like literally out of the blue. She was like, I'm yeah. She just well, missed her mom and her dad. It's so cool. It's such a great but I, I just didn't want to teach anymore. I, I, I taught. What subject did you teach? Band. Band. I lived for it in Murfreesboro, and I realized that God, man, being a band director, you have to live for it. It is. Get out. And I mean, every weekend, man. Every weekend, every, almost every evening is your own call. Here and I, I was able to get on at St. James, which is real close to um, where I actually, northwest from that, where I, yeah. teach, I was teaching over there at the Catholic Elementary School. And I was teaching, you know, music. I know my Lord, I hated it so much. And it was every, it was like constant class after class, and every class, we, they had to learn how to sing um, liturgy because they had mass every week. So they had to practice their songs. And they hated it. These kids are just like, these are stupid songs. So I had to motivate them to try right. to, right. it's just, oh man, I did one there. And then I worked with a couple of programs, and I realized, and then I started to work on my IT certifications. And so, and that's all, it's all, so I can say, it, all, it always works out, you know. How much more do you got left? Well, I'm like her, and I'm just like, God, I See, the problem is they freaking changed it all. That's the problem. What, what was it? It used to be really. Yeah. Well, it used to get a lot more percentage. Yeah, I know. Is that what it was? Yeah. I was talking to this teacher the other day, and she was saying, like, how it's not the health care that's really expensive. It's, you don't get anything to live on anymore. Like, they don't give you anything to live on. Is that really? That's Yeah. Because she was like, my goal was to graduate or uh, teach and retire, and she wanted to have a horse farm, you know, and, and raise she loves horses. And she was like, man, I'm not going to do it because I have to do this for so long that by the time I do stop teaching, I'm not going to be able to help them do it. I know. I know. And that's where I, it, we're all in that same boat, you know, and that shit, I'm ready to travel and have fun. And, you know, I'm part of STRS. You are part of it. It's okay. a, you guys are SIRS. Okay. And mine is STRS, okay. which is uh, teacher. No, are you SIRS? Okay, I'm SIRS. You're SIRS. Okay. Yeah, SIRS. Okay. It's very similar. School yeah, school and boy. It's very similar. And uh, plus, you know, we've had investments for a long time, so we have that going on as well. But they suck. They bottomed out, man. They, Dropped out, so. But yeah, so we're both, we're both kind of in the same boat, you know. We're both ready, but you know, I think when we used to we used to go see our financial advisor for our investment, every year we check in with him and we'll put that chart up there in the computer and he say, Naomi, I know you want to stop. Look at the money. If you go five more years, look how much you're giving up. And she's like, oh, there's a lot of money. I mean, it's almost. Uh, to, uh, I guess, 
What is it? I don't know what the terms are. If you go for so long, you get a little higher percentage. Is that what it is? What is it? Thirty-five. That's what it. Thirty-five. And she's like, man, in five more years. That's what it was. That's what it is right there. But he was like, like, this is how much you're gonna make. He's like, this is how much you're gonna make from the time you started to 30 years. Five more years. You're gonna make this much more. And and it's hard to say no to that. But when you hate your life, you know, that's the... So, so we'll figure it out, man. It'll be fine. I mean, we'll, the good thing is, is college-wise, Jerry's almost done. He's almost paid for it. And we were paying more than a million years. No, it was a year. Yeah. He wanted to go, and he's a really great baseball, so we supported him, but now we don't have to do that anymore for that stuff. But we told him, we were like, look, we have money to still wait for the job. He said it, you know, we have money to the If you want to go to Mola, that's your money, and if you want to go to college, you got to pay him to him. So he was like, okay. So now he didn't know if he wanted to go to college, and then Tyler, he tried the college two times and dropped out twice, but we said, that's it. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not doing it anymore, so if you want to go? on you, and then Carter, he doesn't know if he wants to go yet, so that's really the last one left, so we might see. I don't know. I know. I don't, I don't, I'm not, you know, I know, I've just made it clear to her and the boys both, like, look, I'm not paying for college unless you have a clear understanding day one that you want to do. You know what you want to do. If you're like, you know, I'm just going to show up taking my good old class and can figure it out by year two. No bullshit, man. We're not doing that path. Oh, nope. Yes. Oh yes, I know. We're not I doing that. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to know that you have a passion for it. You want to be an engineer? Show me you want to be an engineer. You, know? you want? To? Which first off, in my opinion, there's only like five or six careers you need to do in college to really to do. I mean, no offense, I've been in teaching myself, but teaching it, I don't think you need to go to college as long as you need to do it. The shit they make teachers go through is ridiculous, man. I mean, you got You can't even get a bachelor's. A bachelor's. Yeah. I mean, that's just get your foot in the door. It's just jumping through hoops. You know? You've got to keep going to school. You're going to get your certification. You know? It's just jumping through. It is. It's ridiculous. Right now. I'm telling you, there's no reason why you cannot um, be like an apprentice for a year. You just you come out of high school and you become apprentice to a master teacher for a year or two. You'll be beautiful, and you do that for two years, you're going to be very good at teaching. You will, you know, there's no reason why we can't do it like that. You want to be an engineer, you want to be a doctor, you want to be a lawyer, you need to go to school, you need to go to college. You know, I don't think there's just a lot of paths, and, and I think young people are seeing that. They just are like, man, yeah. so there's so much online to learn now for free. Like, for, for my IT stuff, if I wanted to, man, I could really push myself and have a lot of knowledge behind me in the IT field, and it's free. It's all free, but I just don't care. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to do a job where I can just. I know. I'd be. I, I told him, you know, I was like, man, I, I think I'd like to live with a for a few years, man. I think that sounds pretty fun, actually. I, I, I like driving around. And, Give me something to do. I, I just, that's really all it is, man. You just gotta have a reason to get up every day. If, if, like, uh, Dan, Dan and Artie, man, bless their soul. Love him. Now, Dan, he lost his life, so he went obviously through. That's, that's the, what is it, lonesome bird syndrome, whatever. He just became depressed, but they sat there. Because they were so close. They, they, they were retired, and they didn't do anything. Woo! He just sat around, and he sat around and watched CNN every day in that chair. And, like if you don't have she did so they did do that yeah. for a few years and that was awesome yeah that yeah. was very helpful yeah. when um amy and i were both really well we, she was teaching and the kids weren't in school yet so yeah um but they just didn't have a reason other than that it's a really it's hard anymore. i know you gotta keep going you gotta find something to get you out of bed every day i know you can only mow the grass and wash the laundry so much i know I remember talking to this one teacher at one of my schools, I think two years ago. She was getting ready to retire. 
Is that yes. what that was? Yes. Okay. So that See, I don't know all the details and stuff. Right. And so that's what she came up with. That's really cool. And we've done that with a few weddings now. And it's pretty good. It's, it's hard to explain to explain it, but when, when they get it, when someone understands what it is, they're like, mm -hmm. And there's been some really cool ones. Like this one, this one couple, they didn't do it for the whole part, for the whole uh, guest book. They made one just for the wedding party. For the bride and the groom, and they all signed it. So it was a smaller quilt, and it was a little bit more personal, so they could write messages. So really cool stuff, you know. Um, and of course, the T-shirt that would be. Yeah, those are the big things that she makes. That's, the, that's pretty much what she makes most of the time. Okay. She has different styles, like there's the consistent blocks, like that you know, like a nine, like a. Oh, like the one, and then there's one called the collage, which is my favorite, and it's like all the pieces are different sizes, and 
you know, big squares and small squares. And it's, it's a clock, and it, that's really a nice. I'm gonna have to talk. I'll talk to you. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I can't remember exactly how. Like, well, I don't know, man. It's just for the longest time, you know, she just had this thought in the back of her head. She was like, oh, I want to learn to do this. John, and I don't think she can work. And she's like, I don't want to teach you work, but I need to find something I can do, and I think this is what I want to do. Like, I like it. It's something I enjoy, but I don't know. Well, and already made me. Yeah. Yeah, she used to make those baskets, right? But she's like, I just don't know if I can make enough baskets. And, you know, and, you know, we did some math. It's definitely not going to make me rich, but it's just another source. It's just another source of income, you know, along with, you know, other stuff. And she's happy. So, hey, man, it is absolutely something. I see these new teachers come into my district. They show up bright eyed and bushy tailed and they have the greatest attitude that could change the world. And I just know. I'm just like, five years, man, you are going to be the Probably. Most likely. And I, I, mean, I know so many really great teachers that I've worked with over the years who are just really inspirational and awesome people. They're awesome people. It's wrong, man. It shouldn't be like that. And I don't know why it became like that. They just put in a pool, yes. a big, big ass pool, man. And, like they were trying to know what they wanted to do with their life. Jack is an engineer, and so he makes, you know, he makes really good money. Um, yeah. What's that name? Their son? Yeah, I have. There's Jeff and, and Ben. 
I had been. I had been. I had been. been yeah. Okay. And Ben is now he's graduated. He's getting ready to get married to a girl. Ben works for the city, right? Yeah, yeah Jeff works, works for Springboro. Okay. He was the one that was a little troublemaker, but man, I'll tell you what. He found his way. You know, when he got into that learning to work the hands on stuff, he's, 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 he's really good. Man, I mean, he, he builds Jeeps. Like, his hobby, his hobby is to make these Jeeps. But my super duper high, strong suspension parts in him and go out into the woods and the mountains and climb these hills with his group and just try to break it. I mean, he does, and then he builds it back again. And so he knows how to weld and drop transmission and stuff. And, and he's just a hands on dude. Like, he decided to do um, like so they all that kind of stuff through Spring Row and drives the uh, snow plow. He loves doing that, except. So that's his thing, and he loves it, man. You gotta learn what you love, and he loves it. So, but Jack and Danielle just didn't know what they wanted to do, or you know, like they talked around. So they decided to put like eighty thousand dollars into this pool. Oh, they're insane. And it's nice. It's really nice that it's big and everything, but I wouldn't have one personally. But that's, she loves it, man. She's, she's out there every day. And Janelle is just one of these ladies who can literally sit in a chair with a book and stay there all day. And, the sun, and that's just not... Now, what is Ben doing? Ben, he graduated. He was, initially, he was going to be an engineer. Uh, I think he was going to try to be a mechanical engineer like his dad, and he just was like, oh, this is hard. So he dropped out of that. And I forgot what he went into, but he graduated and now he works for the Lebanon City National Bank. In that new building, the new bank downtown. Right next to the room. I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, he works there. Okay. And his wife, her name is Morgan, she's from California. They met in Durham for She is a, she's some sort of financial person. And I think she works for Procter Gamble. So they're doing good. They're all right. And then how is he so famous for other? Danny, he still lives in Lebanon, and he is, um, so Danny has a very cool story, you know, something we're all like, I don't know if you ever know, he's a fan, you know Danny, or you heard of him? I'm dreaming. I mean, yeah, so, so Danny was a Star Wars player his entire life. I saw something about this. I saw something, yeah. He, um, he, um, he has, he was always into the toys and comics and Star Wars and stuff, and when he was in college, he was just seen. Well, first he went to the Air Force, and he went to the Air Force, and did that, and he went to the Air Force, and he got the GI. So, because initially he started, he did what he did, he went more to the Navy. So, he went to the Air Force, and he went to UC, and he was going down there, and he went to this is back when Kenner Toys used to be made. Yes. Kenner Toys, you remember? Yes. They made Star Wars. Yes. Okay. So, they went out of business yeah, you can see about that time, and what they were doing, is they were taking all of their stuff that they no longer wanted and just putting it in dumpsters full. I mean, now to them it's garbage, but to a collector, this stuff is uh, completely. When something right, is right. when something is worth How more, when something is worth more than you can put a price on, invaluable, yeah. invaluable, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so he was just walking through there one time and he just looked and he saw. Some, so you know when you buy a Star Wars figure, it's on a it's on a cardboard backing, and it sits on there and it's covered in plastic. Uh -huh. He saw whole sheets of those cardboard backings before they were cut. So it was like huge, and he was like, someone would want that. These are rare things, you know. So one, he came up there one night, him and his friend, after the they closed, and they went through that dumpster and got toys that were. Like maybe mistakes that were made and molds, the original molds that were used to make things. Just all this stuff you can't buy. And he did that for a few nights until they caught him. And he was like, I'm, you know, I don't want to cause trouble with the home. And uh, uh, until they caught him, and he said, they said, look, man, if you want to go through the country, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll come in here and you can get it all out. So. Man, he found a gold miner, so him and his friends, mostly Jeff, mostly uh, Danny, or mostly Danny, acquired, he was all said and done, I think in like $50,000 of merchandise that he ended up selling for the world. Yeah. 
and he sold to people in Australia, just all on eBay, and he made a lot of money to put pay for his home. Yeah, and then, and then Carrie, that's his wife. So he really started off his life with not much of debt, and he was in this with no kids and stuff. He's been able to really kind of just do what he wants. So he he's changed jobs a lot. He he's done a lot of things, and um, he's worked on banks, he's worked on computers, and he's worked in mail. Yes, I think he's one of the younger kids. So he is. I mean, he's really ready. Last I heard, what he wanted to do is he wanted to move down to Florida and sell cotton candy at Disney World. That's what he really wanted to do. Uh, the other day, so, but his, his wife, her name's Carrie. Um, her parents are still alive, and she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to be here. Okay, you know. But they go down there and visit them a lot for their snowbirds, I guess. So they live mm -hmm. yeah. sure. out there. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's um, it's really that way. They've really, they're kids and they've all been able to stay close to their home. That makes it a little. It just makes it nicer when your parents, you know, you, you know, you're your kids. Oh, so yeah. And that's what I'm hoping for with mine, but I don't know. I know Ryan, man, I think Ryan is, he could, man, he is ready to go. I mean, I think he's ready to go. Um, and Jaren, uh, he thinks he's ready to go. Like, he's ready to do it, but he's scared to do it. And he's just like, right. I don't know, I was, I was kind of the same way. I thought I was, I was ready to go, and I, I did. I went to Illinois and stuff, but it's a different thing. You know. Wow, well, they've all been able to stay close to their parents, and that's cool. And so, consequently, they all live near each other now, and they're able to... Yeah. 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 That was the thing, you know, I told her, I said, do you want to stop teaching? I'm 100% behind you. Yeah, so we can do it. You know, she, I didn't tell her that she was like, but I know I have to do something to help supplement her. So I was like, hey, you know, whatever you want to do, I just, I'll support you, man. Just figure out what it is you need. And so far, I think this is what she wants to do. That's what we want to do after we retire. We, we looked at the RV thing and the whole thing was that is it's not the thing. It's, there's a lot to it, man. It's the, it's a romantic idea in your head. But then when you get practical of it, it's very it can be expensive. It's it's gonna be a lot of it's gonna be well. The things break down a lot. Right. Twenty four. They're broken more than they're worth. Five for twenty four. Oh, he's over there by their oh, dugout. Oh, okay. I'm going home. Okay. I'm going home. I'm going home right now. Okay. I sat down on the bench, and the table was one of those tables that was like, you the wall, and you could lift it up if you needed it. And so I was sitting there, and I, I leaned on it, and the damn thing just came out of the wall. Screws came out of the wall, and I was like, this is cheap, man. Because the walls are cardboard. They don't. They, they make them as lightweight as they can. They don't make them like they I don't know if they've ever made them great. Yeah, they, they just... We don't know. We have all kinds of fun thoughts about things we like to do. But that's what's fun. Figure it out. I'm getting ready to have hip surgery. Yeah. July 12th. How long will you be hip surgery? Four to six weeks. I know, man. It is crazy. I feel so young. How long have you had that? I would say last. Probably like a year. Got worse. Where are you having it? My home. <laughs> and you leave it. Yeah, exactly. Like, I walk for more than 30 minutes and it starts barking at me. And it's just screaming. Did you leave it? Just through the years. So I used to be a lot. I've walked about 60 pounds. Yeah. And so I used to be so heavier. Right? 
I'm, I was brutal on it. I marched around the court and carried it from, from my life, played football, and just, I think my brother had a birth rate of much quicker, which made my hips a little offside, and so this left one was just wore down for her. And it's just as you get older, man, your body can't correct itself as well, so. But yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm a little scared, but everybody I've talked to, man, I've talked to a lot of people that have had done their like this. Yeah. When you recover, you're gonna wish, you're gonna wonder why you waited so much, because it's gonna, you're gonna be a lot better. Absolutely. Absolutely. But it just sounds so scary. And I started to go through it with me, and he's like, all right, here's your hip zone, and we're gonna do this. And I go, you know what? Stop. I don't wanna see it. Because it sounds absolutely insane what you're going to do. Right. Yeah, so. You don't want to think about it. She told me to, she's like, man, if you are even thinking about it now, when you want to do it, while you have full coverage, while you have good insurance. So. But the doctors were like, you know, if you do it now, the problem is, that's not a lifetime thing, and you're young. So you may have your to, insurance you, you may have to get it again when you're. Did your insurance okay? Yeah, they, they, just a few months ago, like a few weeks ago, that I got a letter saying you've been approved and all this stuff. Good, good. I don't know exactly how it's all going to shake out. I'm sure I'm going to still pay a lot, but hopefully, I know they'll, they'll cover a lot of it, but you know, I can't imagine <laughs> insurance and the medical stuff is so crazy expensive. Just, they wanted him. Uh, one of the coaches for the varsity, um, Hodges. Yeah. Uh, His wife works on the field. Oh, okay. And well, he does too. And told him, he's like, man, you'd be good on this team. So he goes up there and plays for him sometimes. Oh, he doesn't play all the time. Yeah, he plays occasionally. This is his main team. He likes this team more. Where is your team at? Is your team at? Miami University. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's nice. That'll be nice. I don't think Turner's going to miss it. He, he legitimately does not like it. He just, he's a very very social person. You know, he, I never believe in you know, oppositional yeah. bias disorder. But you minutes. think he might not? Oh, he, there's no mind. He, he was, does when he was little, before he started taking Pokemon, he was literally a scout of Satan. I mean, oh my God, dude. He was someone that you could not be in a room with for more than five minutes. Oh, just out of control, screaming, uh, throwing a fit. I mean, this is the kind of thing that goes to a restaurant. And if you wanted a soda and you said no, it was going to be a damn battle. It was going to be a battle. And you knew it was going to end up you taking him out to the car and screaming. That was basically the way he lived. And then he discovered, he got diagnosed for that and he put him on Pokemon. And it was a big deal. And my God, yeah. And he did a lot. He's a lot better, but he's still. He has a very different feeling about social media. I don't know, man. He just he has a hard time finding friends or something, people that he gets along with. So, I don't know. Uh, people 
people are just, some people are just different that way. You know? And I keep tabs on to make sure he's not depressed or something crazy. I mean, he's not. He's a happy boy. He just doesn't get along with a lot of people in his school. So. And I think this, this zoo thing, I think, is one of the reasons so why he wants to do that. I'm so glad he found that. Yeah. I think it's a great man. I hope he likes it. Because I, I, I said, man, I want to come down there and watch you work and hang out. And see, you know, I think it'd be fun. Oh, yeah. Like, he already had some of those. He worked with the penguin a couple times. And, um, that is it. He's found it. I don't know how that... I don't know. He found it and told me about it. And he was like, was open to trying it. So, and it was one of these things where you were put on a, in a lottery system. You know, you have Cincinnati with that lottery for their school. CCP program, and he just failed out. Didn't want to that's no, that's what happened with me. Six. Well, he, um, oh, it pissed me off because I'm like, see your paper, but you're like, he, he did that. Go back, go down. And he left me and went to counselor for one day. He said, he warned him. Just, they, they don't hold your hand. Yeah. No, 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 exactly. And so, he would take that same plan. Yeah. So I would just check. I would just be like, oh, Yeah, you've been telling me all the time you're fine. That's exactly what Tyler was. And you look at, and finally I would get him to let us look at his curriculum or his assignments and stuff. And it's like all this stuff not turned in. I'm like, He played with Midland last year, and then he played with um, the Warthogs, from the Warthogs, okay. and then became the Knights, and, and then he played with the Jazz. Really? Yeah. Okay. 
first time they played the next night. Right? Well, they did. Let's go play. I mean, last year, this time, they, we were down in Atlanta. We were down in Florida playing in front of Collins Scott and stuff. And They just didn't feel like that was a problem, but I think it is. So I've been talking to him a little bit lately about if he wants to get another one more opinion. We found this tissue place that will actually see the MRI. It shows the tendons and it shows the muscles, but it doesn't show those tendons and muscles in the muscles. And that's what we need. We need to find a way to get him hooked up for you when you're throwing it. The computer can see what it's like. Uh -huh. And so I think that's what we're going to do next. Because he wants I to. Give I, I, I told him, and I think he is wanting to. And it's, he wants to give up, and I don't want him to. And he's he, 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 he sad to see him. So we're going to do that. And we're going to try one more thing. We're going to try to figure it out. Because if it's what I think it is, it's a very minor thing. Four to six months. Healing and, and rehab, and he could be doing it again. And, you know, maybe he's got one to the DM school, maybe he's going to go to the Duke College, which I really want him to do would, anyway. Because I'll tell you right I now. I would not give up on it because people are, I mean, people are, you know, asking me. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, there are these kids that get these um, offers to these D1 schools. That's more of them. So I'm going to tell you right now, there's four or five kids that are going to go there was one kid named Zion, he was a freshman throwing 90 miles an hour. And now he's a, he's a sophomore, he's throwing 93 miles an hour. He's committed to Duke, and that's great and everything. But I'll tell you right now, if you go down there to Duke, and you won't play a single tennis first year, uh -huh. Uh -huh. maybe a second year, uh -huh. if he stays healthy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that's the thing. And I just don't want that. I said, you know what, Big Ryan? Go to the Duke College, call it. small school, you get to play regularly. Um, I suggest that for any athlete. But at the end of the day, man, this is just what we were talking about. It's his choice. Yeah, you can't. And he's got to live with it. So. And I'm not. I don't make decisions for him, but I definitely am trying to make him see that you know the door is not closed. 
all they care about. I mean, well, that's not all, but that's a big thing. Yeah. What they don't want to see is, oh, you started this and then you quit, and then you started this and then you quit. They don't like that. Right, right.
I don't know. It's definitely going to be. It's going to be not quite, but it's going to be like we're going to go find the dumpster in the shower, put on the new and then we're going to. Just him uh, and um, Hodge's son. Okay. He's a PO. He's a PO. Hodge's son. Okay. It's all, they're all a lot of, they're from all parts of the state. There's Miami, Virginia, Cleveland, and Columbus, they're like a state team, so. Uh, like I said, that's what he does, you know, he's done that in the like last year in Midland, I mean, we were playing against some of the top teams in the entire country. Yeah, they, they, yeah kids who were already being scouted by the you know, kids, I mean, and, and he did a lot of stuff to shoot. Some people that definitely qualify for it financially. There are things they, do, they, they do have a system in place where okay. they look at your income okay. and all that, and we just our income is way too high. We apply it every year, and they would say like, "Yeah, you make too much. Um, here's two hundred dollars." I kind of leave. No, no, I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. He became really unhappy, and just he was feeling unhappy, and he said, "Look, man, you know, you're not happy, dude." Because he saw the writing on the wall, like all his friends, that, like I said, all the juniors, all of them, not a single one of them made the varsity team except for one. He never even played. Except the bench the whole. And they all so. 
in the high school season, they might be good at um, a bit, there's a baseball league for kids who don't make the high school team, and that's what they all did. And now, when they all come back, and they're going to hopefully But they're good, man. They won state. You know? They're very good. Yeah, I mean, they're very good. They won and but they're graduating like nine seniors, and of those nine, like six of them are pitchers, and they're some of the best in the, in the state. So they're not going to, I mean, they'll still be good next year, but make one mistake about it. They're going to make a dip. But they'll be back. I make a lot of good time. I know. You got to have the luck. And. That's something you can't keep yeah. Yeah. to want. Because yeah. I, I think this and everything, you can't taste it. You wouldn't wait for me to find him like five days. It's hard for him, man. And he's just like, God damn, man. And I'm like, this is it? You don't want it? And it's not your life. So it was great talking to you. Hey, and that was great talking about I, Artie, too, I man. I love Artie. I think about her all day. She's, um, she was a wonderful, wonderful lady. She's, uh, she's definitely one of the good ones, man. I loved her. So sweet. Okay. And, uh, not me, like her. Was she sick for me? She was. She was sick. She was sick. She was Yeah, I think she, uh, let's see. She Did fell. She had, she fell. And then her ankle was messed up. And then she started to develop some sickness, and they went to, and she just wouldn't go to the doctor. Like, when she fell, like, she went to the doctor and stuff, but, like, she was supposed to do therapy and stuff and keep up on her doctor appointments and her blood sugar. She never did any of that. And so, one time she was sick, and she went to the doctor, and they took a test, and they were like, half of your organs. I think it's supposed to be. It was, it was, it was, it came, it just spread very quickly, and, so, yeah. You know how that is. You know, I'm sure you know that story. When I know. I just, she was a good lady. And then Dan, he, they sold that home and Dan moved out there to Otterbein. It wasn't much longer and after And he that. bought one of them houses Isn't out there. Oh my God. Yeah. He bought one of them houses out there at Otterbein. And it wasn't he, much longer Yeah, he became that. depressed and you, know, you hear that story so, all the time they too. Were so close. Yeah. I mean, they were They were. Oh my gosh. Life, man, I'll tell you it. As you get older, man, you start seeing a lot of the shitty parts of life. I it's, think. It's cool. You see people like dying or people sick. And when you're young, that stuff is not something you ever get to see. But as you get older, man, you start to see it more and more. It's crazy. Okay. Okay, well, we'll good see luck you around. Good luck to you Yeah, good luck.